I have been a massive fan of these for over three years. I've been using them in my fishing a lot. People that follow me on social media would have seen me use them on a number of occasions, not for fish finding necessarily, more for feature findings. I'm actually on the bank with one of the best match anglers on the planet, Matt Godfrey. Now, he's never ever used one. So to match anglers, it's brand new. To carp anglers, there have been quite a few people using them up till now. So my aim today is to show you how to get the best from the product, how to use it, the etiquette you need to follow when using it, but more importantly, making sure that you enjoy your fishing more whilst using the deeper products. So let's go and join up with Matt, have a day's fishing. Godfrey, you absolute god of the human. I, I haven't really come out to show you this product. I've come out to get some coaching for the big fish off. I think I need some off you. I can't catch out today, no, mate. Definitely don't need any coaching <laughs> off me. So, we are at what I would regard as a typical commercial fishery. Definitely. Yeah? Reeds, little islands, margins, sort of place you boys fish all year round. Pleasure anglers, match anglers, loads of people have come to places like this, hundreds of people all over the country, they're everywhere these sort of fisheries. In carp fishing you often get little troughs, little dips where fish have actually bored them out, you know, through feeding right, over time, right. so they're like natural feeding areas. Do you think then on, on your types of waters, these little natural troughs and stuff, if you found them, could it make a difference to your fishing? A hundred percent. From like a match angler or a pleasure angler's point of view, I, often at the minute, a lot of people look for like a hard area on the bottom, so a little bit that's sticking up, a little bar of gravel or something, that'd be an amazing feature on a lot of venues, definitely. And obviously at the beginning of a match, when you're, you know, you're competing, it, you, you, you've got, how long do you normally have? So you set up, and you've got, what, half hour to plumb or get yourself sorted? Yeah, well, you know, it's like nowadays, we've got this big station of gear around us, and sometimes you're rushing about last minute, and you don't have time to explore everything properly, so, having something that could do a little bit of exploring for you would be top dog. Right, well, I have just the thing. Here we go, look. I've got this. Yeah. And I've got this, right? Yeah. The two things you need. And even though I say don't use it as a fish finder, when the weather temperature does drop and the fish become more dormant and slower, then that is a time when you are going to be able to use this and locate fish. Now, that doesn't mean cast all around the lake. If there's other anglers fishing, that isn't a time to start plopping this everywhere and disturbing. People go fishing for peace and quiet, don't they? Yeah, not yeah. when me and you are about. Though. Not when me and you are about. But they don't want loads of noise and this ball crashing around. So use it with etiquette, use it cleverly, and use it in the right situations. It can be a deadly tool. So go on then, should we have a little plop about? Yeah, let's have a little look. earlier that, that that area was quite silty wasn't it yeah you could tell your plummet yeah so so we can see now that very uniform bottom fishes yeah little fishies hard on the bottom pretty much but it's a really shallow water and that is typical of where you go anyone that says this is cheating you're absolutely mad echo software has existed in fishing in sea fishing for absolutely decades when we've been fishing with boats on big inland oceans for carp we go out with echo sounders all the time. Mm. So the only difference now is this is being applied to rod and reel, okay? So it's always been on boats. Now we have the privilege of being able to use it from the bank, from the shore. And again, you're getting the same benefits. There's other settings that, that, that I'll talk to you about. I mean, for example, you've got GPS mapping, which means you can map it all out, record it and save it. So on this, it goes to a cloud and you have the whole area in a particular swim or every swim on the lake mapped out and you could do it on multiple lakes. So you could have a little one saved of your little spot. Gimme, right where we saw them uh, fish on the screen. I kiss him, but he's a bit slimy. Ugh. There's more, more carp than that over here. It's a bit warmer, isn't it? It is warm. Alert in the sun. This is where they want to be, Godfrey. I, I know you gingers this. need to be out of the sun, but <laughs> they're over here. Look. A little Lobbington. Lobbington Wanderers. It's 
So we go, look, three foot. Yeah, look. Just there, look, it's silting up now. See it? It's getting darker there. See there? It's a little bit. That's that marginal shelf of the yeah, island, yeah. just firmer. But look, this area is just so many more fish, mate. I think you need to move, mate. I should give you a hand and get your stuff over here because we have had a little plop around. We found out it's deeper. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> the sun's shining down here. It's We've seen some fish. It's warmer. Yeah, we were saying don't use it as a fish finder, but you can't help but see the fish symbols. The angler in me is like, they're actually here. Let's go. I, honestly, it'd be funny, wouldn't it? If we come out here and start bagging up, then yeah. you'll Let's be buying it. one of them. Come on, you can be me. You ain't having one for free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can see them. You can see the fish. God, didn't pay for this. Moving. <laughs> Overqualified caddy, me. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably all I'm good for. <laughs> good bit of kit, that, innit? Does it show any gold in there? Gold, yeah. Oh, 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 here we go, Bob. We're away here, look. Oh, we're on! <laughs> oh, no. That's the first time I've seen him do that, mate. You know that. <laughs> I'm not going to live it down, Bob. So put your hand here, put your other hand here. Right, put your other hand here. That's it, wind down. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Yes! There you go! <laughs> oh dear. Go on the deep, huh? <laughs> yeah, you like that? Well, you get one of them balls, don't you, to find out where the fish are? You'll like that, wouldn't you? Lovely, okay. fit, lovely fish, that. Look at that. Great fun on a cold, cold. nearly November day. Isn't it cold? Isn't it cold? Fishing in the wrong spot here. We're in the wrong spot, I think, that. <laughs> <laughs> so, clearly we were in the wrong spot. Well, you got that in quick. Done that before, haven't you, mate? No, not very often. I've had some lessons off you, you see. <laughs> Marvin the mirror. Well, we've approximately been fishing about four and a half minutes. <laughs> Bobby George's grandson's had one. He's put a bit of bait out. One first chuck. Looks a bit like Rooney, doesn't it? Yeah, a bit, well, a bit more. But got a gob like Macy, don't you? <laughs> to get him when I can? Yeah. How come yours is better looking than mine? Well, I just tend to... Look at that! Absolute plonker! There he is, look at him! You gain time. You have a sandwich while your mate holds your fish up. Lovely fish. Beautiful. Show us that picture of you. <laughs> <laughs> For me, the best use for a deeper for a course or a match angler would be to use it for mapping out big open lakes when there's so much water to go at, you really don't know the features and it's almost impossible to find them by throwing a bomb around or plumbing up on a pole. That deeper will show you stuff that you can't find out by plumbing up in other ways. The thing that shocked me the most today was probably how discreet the deeper is. It's a little black ball, it doesn't go on with that much of a plot. I was really surprised about that. I've seen loads of situations in matches and when I've just been out pleasure fishing where me and the people around me have thought there's no fish in my peg at all, but actually I'm sure that there is. Today you'd have thought that there were no fish there at all and you plop the deeper in and even on that other side we did see an odd fish so I think I'd love to go out now after today, walk around a match in the middle of winter and put it in people's pegs who don't think there's fish there because I think you'd shock a few.